It's one of the last untamed wildernesses in the world. For those that dare to venture here, indescribable beauty awaits. If you're looking to go on an adventure that will test every fiber of your being, there is no doubt that you have heard the wilds calling you to Alaska. Half a million square miles of wilderness is home to some of the most formidable creatures on the planet. To harvest an animal in this environment requires a relentless determination and the highest level of skill. Alaska is the last frontier as far as I'm concerned. You know, if I had to choose a place to hunt every year of my life, it would be in Alaska. I can't explain the experience. It's why I got into hunting. You know, it was the first time I tasted venison. It made me want to hunt uh, for my food. It's, it's um, you feel like you're self-sufficient. You can take care of yourself. And uh, it's meant a lot to me in a place like this. It's just, uh, just unbelievable. I don't even know how many times I've been to Alaska, and I've done it a few times self-guided. And uh, one of the things that I've learned about Alaska is uh, it's a tough, tough country. A snowstorm blew in. It's gotta be going 40, 50 miles an hour. The four year long wait is over and it's time for Gus to head back up the steep mountains on Kodiak in pursuit of harvesting a mountain goat with his bow. Will we departing shortly? Certainly. Well, we left New York about two this morning. It's 18 hours later. We're right now in Anchorage. Uh, we're gonna be boarding a flight to uh, Kodiak tonight which is something different for us. Usually we spend the night in Anchorage, but I want to get to Kodiak as soon as we can, just because of the bad weather could move in. And it's the last time I was here and hunted on Kodiak, it, uh, we were delayed four days with bad weather. So I want to get there as soon as we can. Hopefully we can get up the mountain and uh, hopefully our bags make it there. Traveling anywhere can sometimes be difficult, but when you're trying to reach the remote parts of Alaska, it can seem to be an impossible task. High winds have grounded air travel to Kodiak Island. All the guys can do now is sit and wait patiently for the weather to break. September 30th, our uh, first day in Alaska at uh, Ugashik Lake. My first Alaskan brown bear, taken with a bow. Um, I'm speechless, I don't really know what to say. This place is so amazing. It's been 10 years since Gus's first hunting trip to Alaska, but the allure of this wild landscape still has a strong grip deep in his soul. You know, there's a thousand cliches that uh, would fit for Alaska. Last night we were trying to get to Kodiak and uh, fly out, but we had 65 mile an hour winds. All set to get on a plane, flight gets canceled. So we're still at the airport. We're gonna try to get out this morning. It's, uh, we got a 6.05 flight and hopefully uh, the winds die down a bit and we get out. But you know, that look, that's Alaska, man. I've, I've been here seven, eight times, I don't even remember anymore. And uh, the weather dictates everything. So the, all your plans, you could have all the greatest plans in the world, the weather will, uh, will change things. After four long years, Gus is back on the hunt to harvest a mountain goat with his bow on Kodiak Island in Alaska. High winds on the south part of the island has grounded air travel in and out. The guys will just have to wait for the weather to break. Gus has made several trips to the Alaskan backcountry over the last 10 years in search of world-class game. 
and the biggest is the bull moose. On average, an adult moose stands between five and seven feet high at the shoulder and can weigh 1,500 pounds. Moose hunting is an adventure hunter's dream. And in late 2010, Gus was able to travel deep into the heart of Alaska for a post-rut moose hunt. With a spike camp miles from civilization, Gus and his team were responsible for not only harvesting a mature bull, but also every aspect of their survival. The harsh conditions and open terrain made hunting the weary old bulls that call this tundra home incredibly difficult. However, with time-hardened determination and persistence learned from many years of hunting in Alaska, Gus did not go home empty-handed. Down. Go Going down. Got blood everywhere here. I could see him from here. I could see his top of his horn. It's November 5th. Came up here on a moose hunt. Tried to do an archery hunt. We got in on, on one bull. We uh, put a stalk on him, but uh, these alders are pretty high. Temperature drop. We had a storm blow in. We decided to use an open sights gun, which uh, I was new to. It was uh, Jake's 30-06. We went after him. My buddy Joe Faulkner here came up, ran camera for me. He's a guide here in Alaska. We put a group effort on this and got this fantastic old bull. He's just magnificent. Um, boy, to check the weather up here, the temperature's cold, but it uh, seemed like it really it worked out today. And uh, boy, I'm, I don't know what to say. This is just fantastic. Another successful Alaskan adventure has come to a close with a great bull on the ground, but Alaska isn't finished with Gus just yet. In 2013, Gus set out on an adventure that was unlike anything he had ever attempted. 40 days, four locations, in the heart of the untamed Alaskan wilderness. One leg of the trip landed Gus just outside of Talkeetna, hunting moose pre-rut. This trip was not about harvesting a trophy bull, it was about filling the freezer for good friend and Alaskan native, Ray Nix. Dinner is served, boys. <laughs> yes, sir. An average bull moose will feed a family for an entire year. And with the days growing shorter and temperatures getting colder, winter is fast approaching. The time to harvest a moose is now. So we're looking out across the lake and, and we spot this bull moose. His paddles are all white, and we put some binoculars on him, and, and you can see the brow tines, and you can see he's a good bull. You can see he's a, he's a big animal, and he's got a good rack. Uh, and a good rack means a legal rack. Here's the deal. We're on this bull right now. We spotted him across the lake. We're not sure if he stayed by the lake shore or went to up the ridge to drier ground. Happy I was with Ray, and he kind of pointed out the easier route out of here, and uh, I know he'll use all this meat with him and his family, and uh, just real happy to contribute. As a hunter, providing food for your family is a great honor. This moose won't set any world records, but for Ray and his family, it means everything. And for Gus, just being a part of the hunt is trophy enough. I know that you don't allow many people, any people outside the family to come up here. So, man, I want to thank you for letting me come up, brother. And uh, it was a good time. It good was. time. It was a really good time. Good right. trip. I love it. We got a moose, man. Hanging. Yep, hanging. Moose hanging. Very cool. Well, we, we made it to Kodiak. We had a flight last night that got canceled because of the wind. So uh, we're here this morning. Uh, actually, it's a little warmer here on Kodiak than it is in Anchorage, which is uh, which is normal because it's out it's an island and it's out in the ocean, so uh, it does get that warmer breezes from the ocean. But we're waiting on uh, Harvey Air, our last 
last flight that we have to take. We have uh, a float plane from here. And if the wind dies down, we'll know in about an hour whether we're gonna be going and he'll pick us up and we'll be on our way to base camp. Kind of cool, man. Cool place, cool place. If you ever get the chance to go to Kodiak, check it out. One of the things about Alaska is, I'm coming from New York, the east coast of the country, and you know, you got a good two days of flying. It's a good day and a half. I mean, and you know, there's a time change. It's a four hour difference. So you get out here and you think you got everything. You know, well, that was the tough part. I got here, but just getting anywhere in Alaska is always gonna be a problem. You know, if you're using a, a float plane or a tundra plane, um, you, you just, you can't fly with bad weather. It's just just something that's hard for people down, down in the lower 48 to understand, uh, but it could mean your life. The beauty of Alaska can only be matched by its danger. Alaska is not a place for the ill-prepared. To survive in this environment requires a steadfastness and self-assurance that few people possess. But for those that do, unbelievable adventures await them. So when I was 18 years old, I uh, graduated high school and two days after graduation, I packed up everything I owned in my truck and drove to Alaska. And uh, I lived with a, an outfitter um, there in the interior and started as a packer with him um, when I was 18 years old there and then went to college in, in Anchorage and guided through college. And uh, I started working for Gus Lamoureux in the spring of 2011. With over 30 years experience as a master big game guide, and a nearly 100% success rate at his mountain goat camps, Gus Lamoro is one of the best hunting guides there is. Having grown up in the hunting business under his father, Gus has proudly carried on the legacy instilled in him decades ago. Last winter, um, Gus gave me the opportunity to, to buy his business and um, you know, after working with him for, for six years and learning the area and um, falling in love with this place, um, I took that offer and uh, here we are now with Big Wild Outfitters. Hey man, let's just give a toast to Big Wild. Absolutely. Hey, what, was that, what was that saying? Big, big dreams, wild adventures. Big dreams, <laughs> wild adventures, yes. Cheers. Man. Cheers. 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 Thank you. After traveling 4,000 miles over two days, it's nice to finally sit down and enjoy a good meal with old friends. But there is no time to waste. In Alaska, you never know when the weather will take a turn for the worst. So the crew needs to take advantage of the good conditions and start the journey to Spike Camp. In the last 12 years of packing and assistant guiding and now registered guiding and now an outfitter, um, I've had the chance to meet some amazing people and. Uh, uh, you know, guide a, uh, a lot of unbelievable uh, adventures and take some amazing trophies. And uh, working for guys like Ray Atkins and Gus Lamoureux, um, you know, having bosses like that with a, com a combined almost 100 years of experience between the two of them, um, I couldn't have learned from anybody better. Uh, so, you know, being 29 years old now and, and having the opportunity to work under those guys and now take the reins, and uh, you know, now running a, a business like this, it's even more rewarding because you know, now I can, I can book the clients and I can um, email in one-on-one -on -one and not only guide, but also you know, encompass the whole business uh, and it makes the experience and uh, the success even greater. So we're going to the spike camp. We get off the boat, we start walking in. We got these big waders on and we're working our way in. Of course, you know, my pack didn't quite make it from Kodiak to here. Everything else did, so, you know, Clay always prepared. You know, he had a spare pack that I could use. You know, we had some of his clothes that I wore and we had enough gear. I kind of separate my gear out, so I had enough, my bow, everything else had made it. Uh, so, you know, I'm using his pack and I had the pair of waders on that were, you know, they're made to get through the water. They're not made to stalk a deer. Anyway, we start walking in. I'm telling you, 10 minutes into the hunt, we see, you know, a small black tail buck with a doe. And, you know, we're looking at this buck going, oh, how cool is that? Next thing you know, this buck turns his head and there's a giant. I look up and man silhouetted, uh, you know, about 100 yards up from that buck was just one of the biggest bucks I've ever seen, if not the biggest buck I've seen on Kodiak Island.
Clay. Okay. I don't think we're gonna get any closer. Not with these waders on. Uh, making too much noise. Gus, that's, a, that's the biggest buck I've seen on Kodiak Island, man. I mean, my rifle's here if you want to use it. Hold on. I mean, he's beautiful, man. He's beautiful. He's with that doe too. Yeah. He. They're calling yeah. in answer. You know he's what? About 180 right now. You he's know what, dude? Range. I got two tags. Okay. I give me a pack. Give me All right. right. Let's do it. Let's do it. My, my voice got excited, and then Gus heard my voice, and it was like, all right, we gotta shoot this buck. I came here to hunt blacktail and mountain goat with my bow, but the situation changed quickly. You know, I looked at Clay and just the excitement of, that's the biggest buck I've ever seen on Kodiak. And you know, to me it was like, okay, you know, try with the bow, let's get as close as we can, but the waders are making noise, and just was no way for me to get in close enough. Brad said he's coming through the brush right now. Safety's off, Ross. Safety's on right now. Turn it off. All right. You see the doe? I got him, man. You flirt him, flirt him. Hold on. Hold on. Got him. Okay, you got the doe. There he is. I got the doe. He's coming out. All right, when you're ready, let him have it. Nice. He's down. Oh, he's man. down. He's Whoa, down. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, we just got here. Nice freaking deer, man. Nice job, man. We just got here, <laughs> and we're packing up the spike camp. And uh, Clay said, dude, I think I see the biggest buck I've ever seen on Kodiak Island. And you know, I came here with the bow. That's we're going after mountain goat and blacktail with the bow, and, and hopefully we're gonna get one down. But when somebody tells you something like that, especially somebody who you know like Clay, I know he's he's not lying. That's a big, that's a big blacktail. So man. Danny Buck, let's get our hands on him, huh? Let's go check him out, man. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. First trip up the mountain, the spike camp. You saw this buck. We tried to go after it with the bow. We had waders on, it was just kind of noisy, and we were, weren't gonna get on him. He had a doe with him, another small buck that he was fighting off, and this is just incredible. Now, Clay, I've looked at Blacktail. You know, I know what I came here to shoot with a bow, but when you saw this buck, what was your reaction? It was, it was one of those, that's a shooter buck. I mean, you don't have to put the binoculars on it, you don't have to put the spotting scope on it. Immediately when you see it, you know it's a shooter. And you know, I know you came here with Bo as well, but man, I mean, to see an animal like this and get a chance at it, even with the gun, is man, you can't pass it up. I'm proud of you, man. It's well, awesome. you know what, dude? Second animal I shot with <laughs> Clay's 375, which is a <laughs> hell of a rifle. But um, look, we still have another blacktail tag, so we're gonna still do it with a bow, but getting a buck like this down is just incredible. Being here in Alaska, Kodiak Island, can't Incredible. ask for anything else. You're having a hell of a year this year, huh? So far, so good, man. Let's <laughs> finish cool. strong. Congratulations. Well, getting that deer tagged up, and we had a packer with us who was going to bring it back to the boat, so um, we continued on up to Spike Camp. And, uh, you know, the goal was to get there before nightfall, which we did, and just had an incredible night under the stars. I, I can't tell you what Alaska means to me. I can't express it in words, but I, I can guarantee you that if you do come here, um, it'll have a special meaning for you. Coming up next week on Live the Wildlife, the adventure continues as Gus sets out from Spike Camp to harvest a mountain goat with his bow. There are monster goats up there. There were times that no animal that was up there was worth that climb. This is serious physical work.